Okay, so welcome to the next session, which is literary genres. After recognizing the various canonical authors, this time we will be distinguishing the various literary genres, especially the 21st century literary genres. For the session learning targets, at the end of the session, you are expected to differentiate or compare and contrast the various 21st century literary genres, infer literary meaning from literal language based on usage in the worksheet to be given to you. Before we go further, I want you to reflect on the following questions. What are the words related to genre? Do you have a favorite book? If yes, what genre is your favorite book? Your answers to your questions allow you will allow you to discover what literary genres are existing in the entire body of literature. At the later part of the 20th century, when technology arises, such as the use of cell phones, computers, and the internet, there is already an improvement in the literary works in the entire body of literature. These are what we call the 21st century literary genres which are the contemporary genres of literature that are introduced in the mid-1990s and are still trending until today. These are the following 21st century literary genres. We have blogs, chiclets, flash fiction, hyper-poetry, mobile phone textula, and speculative fiction. 21st century literary genre that we have here is what we call blog, which is short for web blog. It is a website containing short articles called posts that are changed regularly or that are published regularly. It contains opinions, interests, and experiences in a website kept personally by the writer or is shared by like-minded individuals. So personally, I have a blog before. I used to have a blog before. Um, I used to publish articles and journals there. There are a lot of free websites that offer free um, blogs. So you can create your own blogs using these websites. And some blogs are also um, not for free, of course. For example, in marketing or in businesses, they, have, they really have to maintain blogs or for celebrities or for entertainment industry, they really have to maintain blogs and they have to pay for it. But there are also free websites that offer that wherein you could um, publish your own blog. The following examples. This is what it looks like when in Manila. Um, the theme of the blog is lifestyle, entertainment, and travel. Estimated monthly traffic. When you say estimated monthly traffic, the number of times it is visited, the number of times um, website users interact with this blog. Social media community, 3 million. The social network. Themes, entertainment, beauty, lifestyle, parenting. Two monkeys travel, of course, the theme is travel and lifestyle. Chiclet. The second 21st century genre that we have is what we call chiclet. It is an article in fiction form, short story or novel, which addresses the issue of womanhood. Um, often, the subject of a chiclet is humorous and lighthearted. Chiclet is written by a lady author for female readership. So from the word chick, um, this is a 21st century genre that centers on women, female readers, and usually the authors are also women. Um, the fiction, this kind of fiction celebrates the womanhood. 
and it is also not that serious. It's more often than not humorous and lighthearted. Examples of chiclet that we have here. Sola Musica. It's a best-selling Filipino young adult slash chiclet from Mina V. Esquera, Marla Mignano, Chingay Labrador, and Ines Bautista Yao each tell a story about this festival, the music, the people, the hearts that will soar or break. We also have My Imaginary Ex. It's about 20-something women who are hopeless romantics. Ellie Manuel is more hopeless than romantic. Even after her Prince Charming broke up with her, she just won't give up. Because fairy tale heroines don't live happily ever after right away. Silly, they're tested first. So it's really kind of lighthearted when it comes to plot. It's not that serious. It's usually lighthearted and humorous. And yun na, it usually features a female lead character written by female or women writers. Fairy Tale Fail is also an example of a chick lit. Flash Fiction is the third genre that we have, which is a short story of extreme brevity, so it's really short. Although there is no formal requirement for flash fiction length, but more modern writers suggest that a flash fiction should contain 300 to 500 words. So it's really, really short compared to a traditional short story that contains a thousand words. When we, should, when we say flash fiction, it sounds um, on the spot. It sounds um, direct to the point, one time, um, one shot fiction writing. Here, an example of a flash fiction story by Alma Anona Scarpio, published in December 17, 2016, entitled Midnight Collector. The next genre that we have is hyper poetry, which is a form of digital poetry that contains words, phrases, lines, and images that move along the screen in slide or video formats. It, it is usually um, integrated. Um, using the internet. So when you say hyper poetry, it uses links. It links you to another um, word spaces, lines, and images. For example, how nice it is to be a butterfly. So it's a hyperlink. There is a hyperlink. There is a link behind it. One that frolics across the gardens. So once I click the link, it allows us it allows itself to move freely from one line to another. So that's hyper poetry. The next genre that we have is mobile phone textula. It's a Filipino tanaga, usually four lines stands a poem with a 7777 7, 7, 7 syllabic count and a rhyme scheme of AABB, ABAB, or ABBA. Now, this poetry format was first sent through cell phone in the early 21st century as a form of a game. So we have here sample tanaga. By Il, by Idelfonso Santos. The next genre that we have is what we call speculative fiction, which is an umbrella term that encompasses various fantastical fiction genres. So it's really a big um, category because there are still subdivisions of speculative fiction. Let's start with science fiction. So, in short, sci-fi, it's a genre of fiction literature whose content is imaginative but still based in science. 
Now, sci-fi relies heavily on scientific facts, theories, and principles so that it could support its setting, characters, themes, and plot lines. That is why it is kind of different from fantasy because it still has scientific theories and facts. Next is fantasy. So, it includes magical or supernatural elements as plot, character, setting, or theme. Now, the main difference is that in fantasy, the world building may not be existent in the reality, while science fiction looks forward to a future that has not yet existed. So that's the difference between fantasy and sci-fi. Horror, you're, you're already familiar with horror. The purpose is to create feelings of fear, terror, or dread or repulsion in the audience. It's a subgenre of speculative fiction that originated in the late 19th, 19th and 20th centuries. When we say weird fiction, um, it is composed of radically interpreted ghosts, vampires, werewolves, and other traditional antagonists of supernatural horror fiction. Supernatural fiction, of course, is something about things that cannot be explained by nature or science, and it is assumed that these events or things come from otherworldly forces. For example, ghosts and witches, those are examples of supernatural fiction. Fiction um, revolves around the adventures, personalities, and ethics of um, firefighters, sorry, fighters only not firefighters, fighters only, so, which are commonly known as superheroes who often possesses, who often possess superhuman powers and they fight with crim criminals known as supervillains. So that is what we call superhero fiction. Literature. Um, you, when we say utopia, it translates into a perfect world, a perfect universe, a perfect society in a physical world, as opposed to what we are having right now, as opposed to um, the afterlife. Okay, that is what we call utopian literature. Now, sometimes the motives of utopian literature is kind of political, social, or philosophical. For example, is Plato's The Republic that is the first example of utopia in the history of literature. And literature is the opposite of utopian literature because in dystopian literature, the world building is imperfect. Everything is terribly, horribly wrong. There is a sense of nightmare in worlds in dystopian literature, which might be possibly happening in the near future. Now, usually the themes of dystopian are rebellion, oppression, revolutions, wars, overpopulation, and disasters. If you're familiar with The Hunger Games, The Hunger Games is a dystopian literature. Um, the Hunger Games is set in the city of Panem, wherein the, the capital controls the Panem, and it is divided into 12, 13 districts, right? And it is an imperfect society because annually they, held, they hold a celebration called the Hunger Games wherein two tributes are sent to the capital to fight against each other, to kill each other as a form of entertainment by the capital. By the capital. So it's kind of nightmarish. When it comes to its setting, that is what we call dystopian literature. Apocalyptic literature, from the word apocalypse, um, it, it's about the end times, usually revealed by an angel or other heavenly messenger. That is what we call apocalyptic literature, the visions of the author of the end of the world. That is what we call apocalyptic literature. 
How about post-apocalyptic literature? Now, in order for a uh, literature to be post-apocalyptic, the setting must be one where the end of the world has already taken place and characters are trying to survive and start anew. Now, the end of the world event that occurred can be anything from war to plague to natural or man-made disasters. Now, post-apocalyptic literature dif is different from apocalyptic literature because in the post-apocalyptic literature, the, op the apocalypse or the end of the world has already happened. It's just that the setting and the characters are trying to survive in that um, after event. While in apocalyptic literature, the setting is the end of the world is just about to happen. Okay, for example, The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead is a uh, post-apocalyptic because the end of the world has already happened. Um, the world is already um, what they call this. The, the zombies are already populating the world. So, they are trying to survive. That is what we call post-apocalyptic literature. History is a genre of speculative fiction consisting of stories in which one or more historical events occur differently. So, there is an alteration of the historical events when we talk of the alternate history. It usually contains the question, what if? What if something happens differently in the history? That is what we call alternate history. You're familiar with this. It consists of comic arts, um, sequentially arranged that represent individual scenes, right? Um, usually the dialogue contained in balloons in the comic art form. Now the largest comic book market is in Japan. That's why we really love mangas or animes, right? Out of the 21st century literary genres that we have identified, I want you to reflect on the following questions. Why do authors use a specific literary genre? Okay. And in three to five sentences, I want you to explain the differences between utopian and dystopian fiction. Three to five sentences. Please elaborate apocalyptic and post-apocalyptic literature. And I want you to get more examples of apocalyptic and apocalyptic literature to establish the solid difference between the two. Literary, literary author, what, what one essential factor can you give in choosing literary genre for your future writers? Now, I want you to construct a reflection of this question into the three sentences. To sum it up, the 21st century literary genres occurred when the technology has arisen. Okay? There is an improvement in the literary genres, influenced by the internet, by the use of cell phones, by the use of computers. That's why the 21st century literary genres are introduced to us that are still existing until the day. These are the following genres of 21st century, we have blog, chiclet, flash fiction, hyper poetry, mobile phone textula, speculative fiction, which is an umbrella term that encompasses more fantastical fiction genres such as science fiction or sci-fi, fantasy, horror, weird fiction, supernatural fiction, superhero fiction, utopian and dystopian fiction, apocalyptic and post-apocalyptic fiction, alternate history, and comic books. These are the genres that we're going to focus on, and at the same time, these are the genres that we're going to produce at the end of the session, at the end of the course of 21st century literature from the Philippines and the world. You may visit them.